Hey guys, today I'm painting a special treat. I'm painting a valentine for my valentine. Um, a few weeks ago, I drew this really cute little fawn girl based off of something kind of stupid he said to me. He said he was awfully fond of me uh, in a joking way. And um, my brain took it as fond, like a fawn. So I had to draw a cute little fawn girl as a valentine. I mean, it's like prerequisite, right? And I thought I would color her on screen for you guys. Um, you know, as like shared Valentine, Valentine for me to you guys to say thank you for, um, how supportive you guys have been. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, I just thought you guys would enjoy seeing it. If there is other types of content you'd like to see, like if you'd like to see me work on something like this from start to finish, from like sketch to finish, let me know that too in the comments because I can do that. It just takes a little more planning. I tend to go for, um, if I'm doing a video like this, it's very spontaneous. It's like, oh yeah, I have this finished piece of something that I can color for them. That's right. So if you want to see something specific, uh, please let me know and I will try to accommodate you guys because this is a partnership and I want to include you guys and I want to thank you guys for, um, you know, subscribing and leaving comments and talking to me. It is, uh, it means a lot because I, you know, made the big, not, I'm not, I can't say I fully move. Like I still regularly, very regularly post on the blog. And if you haven't checked that out, you should. Um, it's natosoup.blogspot.com. I post goodies like this and more. Um, I'm on like a three day rotation schedule in general. So every three days I'll post something. I used to post every other day and it was kill it was killing me. Um, but now I post every three days and that's a little easier to maintain. So if you enjoy this sort of content and you want more of it than once a week, then please check out the blog. And there's like six years of archive on there, six years of um, book recommendations and art supply reviews and art supply lists. I mean, you know, I think it's a pretty good resource, but I've also, I'm also the writer, so of course I think it's a pretty good resource. But I think you guys should check it out if you haven't checked it out already. I know a lot of you found my YouTube through my blog and I wanted to say thank you for checking me out on here as well. Um, I really appreciate it. It makes it easy on me when the audience, like the audience is very similar because I <laughs> can be kind of lazy and just cross reference things instead of um, having to like completely re-explain myself every time. So thank you for enabling me to be lazy. I appreciate it greatly. And I have some really good things in the works for March. Uh, I think a lot of you started following my channel because you enjoy my art snacks and sketchbox unboxings. And there's only two of those on my YouTube right now. There's a, another year's worth of art snacks on my blog. Um, but those are like photo uh, reviews, not like, um, not like, like this which is what you guys seem to like um is the video unboxings but i have a lot of great stuff coming in in march i have the art snacks lettering box and i have the um the studio box for sketchbox as well as the original uh boxes that i've been unboxing so it'll be exciting to see how those compare with their normal counterparts and then I have two cons in March. I have Comic Con in Huntsville, Alabama, which I'm excited about. And I have MTAC in Nashville, Tennessee, which I'm super excited about because I love MTAC and it's gonna be my third year at MTAC, woo! Um, so if you're in the Nashville area or if you're in the Huntsville area and you think you can make it, please come out and say hi, check out my table, flip through my comic, uh, consider commissioning me for some original art. My prices are very affordable. Um, 
And if you're not in the area, please check my blog because I post the cons I'm going to be attending um, in my sidebar. So I might be in your area at some point, unless you're on the West Coast, and then the chances of me being in your area are kind of slim because I live in the East, the Southeast. In fact, I am in Tennessee right now, and it's very expensive to do cons on y'all's coast. So we'll probably never meet <laughs> unless you come to me. But that's what's going on for me. Uh, so I got to let this dry, and I'm going to go grab another watercolor palette, and I'll be back. Okay, so that's fairly dry, and I had to go get another palette. When I'm painting comics, I usually work with two palettes, but this one has been put away because um, working at my desk just doesn't leave me with enough space. So, as unfortunate as that is. And you guys might, uh, you see me working with one uh, water cup and um, that's not really recommended. Uh, it's not, I'm not endorsing this. It's just my space on my desk is so limited. Oh, shoot. See, like, I can't even. I really need a bigger desk, I guess. For painting, at least. My boyfriend, who doubles as my editor for these videos, is always getting on me to start watercoloring at the desk. And uh, there's just not enough room for it. I am wrecking my back, though. I do usually paint on the floor because I have room on the floor. And uh, I am painting on... Um, oh, I forgot to paint her neck right there. That's stupid. I'm painting on Aquabee watercolor paper and I actually don't like it um, at all this was this is part of like an ongoing series of tests that I put watercolor sketchbooks through because I'm trying to find the perfect one um, and this one is not the perfect one like the paper wants to buckle and um, it takes the paint kind of strangely and it's not as tex the texture isn't as pronounced as I would like, despite it claiming to have a pronounced texture. So, you know, this is not a winner for me. Previously, I was painting on the Strathmore uh, watercolor visual journal, and I don't care for that either. So it's hard to find a good uh, pocket or purse size, backpack size, watercolor sketchbook. Or I'm having trouble. That doesn't perform kind of like crap, I guess. Excuse my French, I'm sorry. Although that word is probably the strongest thing you're going to hear me say on this channel. So if that word offends you, I'm sorry, but turn your volume down. I don't know. I'm going to have to go get fresh water soon because this is um, the Alzerian crimson I used. Definitely polluted it. It's kind of an opaque crimson. The This pink. It's kind of an opaque color, so it tends to make your water look muddy and disgusting quicker than translucent or transparent pigments will. Uh, it's one of my favorite colors because it gives this like really pretty sort of skin tone peach, but, you know, it doesn't make painting, doesn't keep your water clean. I have a cat on my lap who's about to get kicked off because he's squirming around too much. Whenever I sit in my desk chair, he wants to be all over me. He doesn't seem to care that he's horribly inconvenient. I think I've talked about him before. I think I've talked about him a lot, actually, thinking about it. But um, I don't think he's been on camera a whole lot and I don't know that I plan to have him on camera a whole lot because he's a bot. He just looked at me. Does not care. Not his problem. That's your problem, toots.
And really, she's more of a goat girl than she is a deer girl. Fawn still applies. Just a different spelling. Well, this spelling is correct. <laughs> just not, whatever. Not like F-A-W-N, fawn girl, but like fawn girl, whatever. <laughs> Cat, you're being distracting, buddy. You're like all up in my business. All right, so I need to let this dry before I can continue. Okay, so it looks like everything is kind of dry. It's soaked in at least. It's not going to be prone to moving. So I'm going to go ahead. Ow! Sorry, cat on the lap. Thinks claws deserve to go in skin. Stop it. Um, going to go ahead and paint in the background color. I'm doing things kind of out of my normal order. I always get a little bit flustered um, when I'm recording. Just... Especially if I'm talking, I get distracted. Especially if there's a nervy cat on my lap who's sinking his claws into my flesh. I am not awfully fond of my current situation with the desk and the cat and the no room to actually paint. This needs to change. I need to rearrange some stuff. Because, like, my arm is completely off the desk. And that's not... And this should be propped up, too. But, I mean, you know, like, there's so much other stuff on here that I don't have a lot of room to do that with. I guess I could use that eraser. Did you see that? Little jerk needs to keep his tail to himself. This paper isn't buckling yet as badly as the Strathmore did, so that's a plus. Um, Strathmore buckled the um, visual art journal paper buckled so bad that I couldn't get actual, like, decent scans of any of my work. Uh, and I don't really want to remove the sketches, the watercolor sketches, out of the sketchbook, but that looks like what I'm going to have to do. So, if you're looking for a watercolor sketchbook that can, um, shoot. That can handle water and will still be scannable, that is not the sketchbook you're looking for. This one seems to handle the water a little bit better, but we'll we'll find out. I mean, this page is going to end up getting so saturated that, you know, if it can't handle it, well, I'll know. You know, uh, I know a lot of artists. Stop it! I know a lot of artists have cats, um, and one of the great annoyances of being a watercolor artist is when you have cat hair in your painting and it like smears what you're painting uh, and uh, that was what I was just moving just now and I know some artists lock their cats out of their studio and that is increasingly becoming a dream of mine <laughs> is to have the space to boot him elsewhere All right, so that background needs to dry. Maybe I can do some rearranging. All right, so the background still isn't completely dry, but it is dry enough that I can go in and uh, add a little bit of depth to some areas. And um, while I was waiting for it to dry, I went ahead and changed out my water since the Alzarian Crimson had contaminated it so much. And um, in other videos, I talk about how important it is to use two cups of watercolor water, one clean and one dirty. I still stand by that. Uh, I'm just, my space on this table is kind of limited. I'm 
Sometimes I can like finagle it so that I have a little more space, but you know, today was not one of the days I was able to do that. I guess I should say when your desk starts looking like this, when you get to the point where you can't use it anymore, it's time to massively clean it and rethink how you're organizing your supplies because um, this is not really the best use of my space. If you're smart, and by smart I mean smarter than me, um, you won't be a crotchety person who's like, well things need to stay where they are all the time. Like you should, cons if it works for you, you should consider changing up your desk's layout to best suit what you need it to do. Right now this is not what, this does not suit me. <laughs> okay, so I've already mixed up a next tone darker for her skin should be the next tone darker and I need to wait and allow the background to dry so I will see you guys in a minute all right so it took a little while for my background layer to dry I don't know why but this area was being particularly persnickety Ooh, that's like a lot darker See, that's the problem with propping it up with an eraser. Now, another thing that's weird about this paper, it makes it kind of not good as a watercolor paper, is on it absorbs the paint in general too quickly, and uh, that means I can't blend it out like you saw me attempting to do. Doesn't work. So for me, this paper is not really ideal. This is not a good watercolor paper for me. Because then I can't, also I can't like pick up problem areas the way I normally can. If you enjoy painting on uh, B watercolor paper, please comment and let me know like if I'm doing something wrong uh, sure feels like I am uh, if this is just like a noted quality of the paper and I either have to get used to it or use something else you know like fill me in because I am having a hard time with it and I don't like it so you know I might end up slamming a company but I'm doing the wrong I'm using the product wrong so I'd rather you guys let me know and I can change my approach just not awfully fond of this paper I'm used to being able to get some pretty smooth blends. It seems like it doesn't matter how quick I try to work, it's already soaked into the paper so I can't do much to fix it. And then you have areas like right here, let me zoom in, areas like right here where I thought it was dry. Right there and I guess it wasn't and it spidered out so I had to give my cat the boot because he was trying to get into everything too This is really more like painting on regular sketchbook paper in terms of what I'm able to accomplish, which is kind of frustrating. Now I also wanted to point out, 
Uh, even though I'm having problems with this, this paper, and when I review it, I probably am not going to leave a very nice review. Uh, I have no intention of contacting the company and trying to get a refund. Um, and the reason for that is I, I, you know, I could be the problem just as much as the paper could be the problem. And it could be my lack of experience that's causing poor performance. That's why I asked you guys if you happen to be familiar with this paper um, and you see me doing something wrong, I'd like you to let me know before I write my review so I can so I can try a different technique or I can modify what I'm doing or I can just understand that B paper isn't going to work for what I want it to work. Um, I know someone who works at an undisclosed art supply distribution company and they said that they are always dealing with customers who buy product. don't read the description, buy products that don't work the way they thought it would in their mind, and now they want a refund on this used product. Um, and it's like apparently a big, it's a big issue in their business. So as an independent artist who is in no way at all affiliated with this company whatsoever, um, I'm not even standing up for that particular company because I have my own very different issues with them. I'm just saying, um, don't expect a store to replace a non-defective product if you aren't, if you're the reason why it's not working. Um, if you didn't do your research, if you made assumptions about a product and it's not living up to your expectations, supplies are not all made the same way and you know that's why different artists have different favorite brands is because it suits their needs so what suits your needs might not work for me and vice versa so um, don't just assume the product is defective maybe just assume it's not for you I mean clearly if it's like a pin and the pin is exploded in the package before you even got it you know or it's dry uh, and you never even used it, you know, that's different. Those are clearly issues with the store or the pin, or maybe you just got a defective one, but you shouldn't, in that case, that's not your fault. You shouldn't be held accountable. But you can't, you know, it's not like a television. With art supplies, if it's open already, they can't resell it. So, you know, it's, and they often, with these small, I mean, there's not like high margins necessarily on art supplies either. So with some of these stores, they're cu cutting it pretty tight in terms of trying to offer a good product at a reasonable price. So, um, you know, it's not like they're making money hand over fist and they can just afford to give you refunds and you're not really hurting anybody. You're hurting a company that has employees whether you're buying from Plaza, Jerry's, Dick Blick, or what have you, you're hurting a company when you just, like, return something because because of you, because of something on your end. So, like, I'm not going to be contacting Dick Blick about B paper because that's not, that wasn't, this isn't on them. This is on me and the paper. You know, I might consider contacting B with my concerns and, you know, letting them know that so they can make a better product in the future, but that's up to them too. They can decide not to do anything about it if they want because they're, that's their business. You know, they don't owe me any sort of changes, honestly. There are plenty of people who actually really like this paper. At least according to YouTube. There are people who use this paper all the time for their own work. So, you know, I can't expect an ex a replacement when, you know, I might be the problem. I just, I feel like that's worth mentioning. Because, like, you're giving, you're, when you behave like that, you're acting kind of like an entitled child. And um, you're making it difficult for other creators basically. Okay, so you see that?
This paper, speaking of defective, possibly, I don't, I don't know. See, there's like a lot of feathering on this paper, and that was a dry area. So as a watercolor paper for me, how I like to watercolor, this paper is not a good fit. This isn't turning out the way it should be turning. The way, like, I have enough experience with watercolors that I kind of know how it should look on the right paper, um, and it's not doing that. So all, all I can really do is I can share my experiences with you guys, I can share my concerns, and I can give you guys the information you need to decide whether or not you want to use this paper yourself. Now some of you might see it and see how it's behaving and you know you work much thicker than I do, you use gouache, you know it probably isn't going to be an issue. So you know you decide you want to give it a shot and that's up to you, like go for it. I might be working too wet. There's some watercolor papers that just, you know, can't take a lot of water. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, I personally think hot press doesn't really perform, the hot presses I've used don't really perform all that well if you have as wet, I guess, a style as I do. But if you work um, a little more thickly with thicker blends of, of pigment, you know, they work a lot better. I mean, it's the same concept as all those marker paper tests I've been doing, you know? Like, um, those, a lot of the markers don't work on every marker paper that comes down the pipe. So, you know, are you going to discard the markers or are you going to try to find the right paper? Well, in my case, I'm so attached to my Winsor Newton palette, I'm so attached to this method of painting, um, I'm probably not going to go out of my way to change how I render just so that I can make a single watercolor sketchbook work for me. Now, if after four years of testing multiple, multiple brands, I still can't find a brand I like, then I'm going to strongly consider changing because, you know, I'll have done my due diligence, I'll have tested a bunch of different papers, I'll still have the same problems I was having before. I mean, if you really, really do have an issue with a paper or a product or whatever, pencil, um, you can call by all means. The companies do want you to let them know when you're having problems. And if they opt to refund it or replace it, that's up to them. But, you know, don't angrily email companies or stores because something didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. Because all you're doing is you're creating this notion that artists, stampers, creators, crafters, whatever genre you fall into, that all people in that genre are going to be annoying and difficult. And that's just not the case. The case could just be your being annoying and difficult. But if you behave like you're entitled to this replacement, then, you know, they're kind of in their rights to not want to deal with you too much. And I mean, there are also polite ways to, to contact somebody about these kind of problems, you know? If you're not on the offensive, they're way more likely to uh, take you seriously and want to help you. I'm sorry also if it seems like I just love to lecture. Um, I know a lot of a lot of you guys are watching these videos because um, you didn't necessarily go to art school, but you might have liked to have gone to art school. You're trying to you're trying to improve yourself. You're trying to improve your work, or maybe you are preparing to go to art school. And I'm trying when I lecture <laughs> you guys like this. I'm trying to share some of the education that I I have to help you out and to help the industry out and to help myself out. I mean, you know, it's not purely 
a selfless thing. But I know that um, for a lot of us, some of these things aren't as clear cut as they could be, especially when it comes to etiquette and behavior and expectations, you know. And I mean, if this is stuff you already know in terms of, you know, proper behavior, then just, just feel free to ignore that and just enjoy the painting or nod your head in agreement and be like, yep, that's right. Feel, feel special. I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not like telling you guys this because I think you guys are guilty of it. I'm saying it because I know, you know, eventually there's going to be a situation where, um, you could maybe benefit from someone else's experience. trying to decide if I want to keep using this kind of tiny brush but it would pull good highlights in the hair or if I want to switch to a larger butt brush that on this paper would be more difficult to control. That was a mistake. Over saturating the area. That's like a cheaty trick I use um, on nicer papers where it's going to just like sit and I can continue to pull from it but on this paper, it's very prone to feathering out. See, if you're smart, you'll have your water cup on the opposite side, so you're not going to be dragging it over what you're doing. But I'm not smart, and I'm also limited for space, so... If you're learning anything at all from me, please learn the opposite of what I'm doing in this instance. not practicing very smart behaviors. Even though, even though I'm trying to be very careful to stay in the lines because I know I can't correct on this paper, I'm still having some trouble with it because uh, I guess I have a bad habit of knowing I can go outside if I want to, outside the lines if I need to, um, in general. So it's hard for me to, to correct myself on this. I guess that's one of the good things about using a material that's going to fight you is it's going to break you of lazy habits. Like when I do those cheap art supply reviews on the blog, um, you know, it's definitely forced me to get out of the habit of knowing I can always work fast with markers, for example. Um, so, you know, with it's helped with the later water-based markers because I already understand that that's a limitation that I'm going to have to just 
accept because that's what those that's how those markers behave. In this case, with this paper, uh, I'm going to have to be a lot neater than I normally would. Um, the Strathmore paper forced me to be more succinct, to use fewer layers than I normally would. So even a situation that seems unideal, you know, can teach you a lot about how you use your materials in new ways or better ways to use your materials. So I need to let that dry, um, but instead of pausing the video, I can actually go in and work on some of the hand lettering stuff. I really either need to replace my brushes or condition my brushes because they're looking rough. That's my fault, not the brush's fault. Okay, so I need to let her hair dry and her eyebrows dry, and then I can tighten that up. Okay, so the hair is cool to the touch, which means it's not dry, but it does mean the paint is soaked in, and I can apply another layer. Also, building up contrast. And going outside the lines. On areas of the fawn girl that would be away from the light source. The problem with doing that on the face is this paper absorbs water so fast that it makes it really hard to blend. Bee paper, why you gotta be so difficult? something to darken up that pink. All right. So her hair isn't quite dry, so I need to let that dry, but then I can add the last layer to the hair, fingers crossed, and then start adding details and highlights. Okay, so we're approaching the finish line. I know I keep saying that. I know I keep thinking that. It is time, fingers crossed, to finish her hair. And I'm using a combination of sepia and Van Dyke Brown, in case you were curious. Now 
you can see it's really making, well, I guess you can't see. Ah, you have to trust me. It's really making the paper bubble up because I've applied, I guess, too many layers on this paper. All right, so other than highlights, we are just about finished. I did want to go back into the flowers and add a little more Windsor Newton Green Gold, which is one of my favorite colors. It's just such a fresh green. Okay, time to let it dry and then come back and add highlights. Okay, so we're finally at the point where we can start adding details in white. So there's a few ways, sorry about that. You know what, I'm just gonna pick these up. There's a few ways we can add white highlights. Um, and that's why I like to keep an opaque white kit because it has most of my options. I am missing my opaque white pit pen. I think I put it away with the rest of my pit pens. We have a few options for adding white. We can use watercolor pencil. We can use color pencil. We can use white pastel. We can use the white blender from um, the Windsor Newton pigment markers. We can use a Recollections opaque um, marker, or we can use Picket Fence. And I also have a white Posca over here, but um, I have not hot on it for this kind of an application. It tends to be a little too harsh. Now, if you want to use color pencil or watercolor pencil, it's important that your paper be fully dry. And right now, my paper is not fully dry. Oh, wait, I actually have a few more options. Uh, a white soccer jelly roll, which is not my favorite. Um, a white Uni Signa, Signo gel pen, or Copic opaque white. Um, so going back to what I was saying, if you want to use the color pencil, the pastel, or the um, chalk pastel, or the watercolor, you need the paper needs to be dry. Now the nice thing about the watercolor is you can apply it and blend it out. And I'm not getting as stark a contrast as I would have wanted, probably because the paper isn't fully dry. So I'm going to have to allow the paper to dry all the way and get back to you guys to demonstrate this stuff. Okay, maybe I'm impatient, but I'd like to think it's a little drier. The point I'm trying to make is that with watercolor pencil, you can put it down and then you can kind of blend it out so it's not as harsh as, say, opaque white would be or these would be, or, you know, other things would be. You, it, it looks more like it belongs in the piece. Which is, works out well because a lot of these um, white products have kind of a blue a blue tinge to them so being able to blend the color out uh, allows it to look more like it belongs of course if you're if you're working this way it will take a while because you have to allow the um, water you've added to dry before you can add your next layer I mean, even on dark areas like this, you can, if you have highlights that you don't really care for, you can sort of fix them. And some people just go ahead and color in the whole area, and then they add their highlights after. And I like to leave the white of the paper. Now see, this might be a problem, because I did apply my paint very thickly so it's probably going to reactivate some of the paint. So before I can continue too much, I'm going to have to allow the areas where I applied water to dry because I can't put anything on top of the water at this point, as long as it's still wet. Oh, I 
shoot, I'm sorry, I forgot to pull back out. Okay, so where I had blended out the white color pencil with water, that area has dried. So, I, I mean the white watercolor pencil. So I have the option, I can use um, a white color pencil that isn't water solvent like this Derwent um, Color Soft, which happens to be my favorite type of color pencil. Um, I can use that to also bring in some white highlights or to soften the effect. So in this instance, I'm going to use the white Color, so color Soft to start drawing in some light fawn freckles on her skin and I want them to be kind of irregular because the spots on a fawn are not um, they're not uniform in size or shape and uh, I'm trying to kind of disperse them across her face going to add some white shine to her lips and across the bridge of her nose. And add some of that white highlight back to her hair. Now, if I want to lighten a larger area, I can use the white blender for pigment markers to sort of add um, large sort of diffused highlights. But I don't really want to do that right now. Um, I do, however, want to start adding maybe um, some like white reflective highlights to her hair. a little more solid than I was getting with the color pencil. And I'm going to use the Copic Opaque White for that. Now you can use white gouache if you like white gouache, if you enjoy using it. I recently got a pretty mediocre batch, so I'm kind of avoiding it. I should probably use it or throw it away. Um, but I guess I am still deciding. And I can add some white, let me clean that off, some white highlights, oh, wrong pencil, to her ears. If I want to, I can even lighten up areas of her dress by adding a little bit of white color pencil or white watercolor pencil. Now, the white color pencil will add a little bit of a resist. So if you want to um, make it whiter, you're just going to have to be very careful and give it a long dry time because um, if you're applying something water-based on top of it, uh, my hand's starting to shake, so I'm going to have to fix that later. That's another area of resist. Now the watercolor pencils aren't going to give you that sort of a resist. So if that's something that bothers you, go with, stick with your watercolor pencils. You don't have to blend them out.
so that is just about done. I am going to have to make some corrections because uh, my hand started shaking, which is, you know, always a fun thing to happen. And you want to wait until your ink is dry. Because wet, opaque white can ruin your the nibs on your pens. Oh, see? Not patient enough. Now, one of the problems with opaque white is that it is a little bit shiny. So if you don't happen to like how that looks, you might want to avoid it for um, white gouache. But otherwise, it tends to be a little bit easier, in my opinion, to use. Although, I think you can't blend it out with water. Let's make a mess of things and find out. No, actually, you can blend it out with water. So, um, if you happen to think an area is a little too harsh, you can kind of soften it a little bit by going over it again. Or you can make a horrible mess by doing that which happens to me too. So I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys later. If you like this video, make sure you like, consider leaving a comment and subscribe to my channel for even more great content. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.